Hello again, AP Physics students. In today's lesson, we're going to look at capacitors. Not so much what effect a capacitor has on a circuit just quite yet, but we're going to look at circuits that have multiple capacitors and then try to find a way to take capacitors that are either in series or in parallel and then combine them into a single capacitor, much like what we were doing with resistors in series and in parallel. We are trying to find a way to find an equivalent resistance. So that'll be the primary focus today. And then in some of the future lessons, we're going to start to look at what effect in an actual more complicated electric circuit a capacitor has. We'll begin just with a quick review of what a capacitor is, although we did talk about this back in the electricity unit. So a capacitor is a device that is used for storing electrical charge. And one of the more simple capacitors just consists of a couple of parallel plates separated by a specific distance, and it's filled with a dielectric, typically, if you want to make the capacitance higher. <clears throat> In a circuit diagram, we represent a capacitor just with a couple of uh, lines that are parallel to each other, and they have the exact same length. So in effect, it's just showing you that the capacitor is, in fact, uh, a parallel uh, consists of a bunch of a couple of parallel plates. What we know is that <clears throat> a capacitor has a capacitance, and capacitance is a measure of how much charge the capacitor can hold per unit volt, and that's equal to kappa, which is the dielectric constant, which is a number that would be equal to one if there's no dielectric between the plates. Uh, otherwise, it'll be bigger than one. Multiply by epsilon naught, the vacuum permittivity. Multiply by A, that's the that's the uh, area of the plates. And then divided by D, which is the plate separation. If you have the circuit that you see below, and let's say that we have just a battery connected to a single capacitor, what will happen is once you connect the circuit up, you're going to have one of the plates gain a charge of negative Q. So <clears throat> that would be the top plate here. You, oh, Sorry, the bottom plate. You'd have electrons that come out of, come out of uh, the bottom of the battery, and they'd start to accumulate on the bottom plate. So you get a charge of negative Q. And because the battery is doing work, it would then take electrons from this top plate and then move them around, and that would leave the top plate so it's going to be positively charged. Or if you want to do this in terms of the conventional current model, you could just say that protons come out of the positive, uh, the positive terminal and go to the top plate, and then that would leave the bottom plate with the deficiency in, uh, in protons. So the top plate has a charge of plus Q, the bottom plate has a charge of negative Q. Now, because you have uh, on each plate, you have an equal charge magnitude, but just opposite sign. You now have an electric field between uh, the in the parallel plate region. And that electric field will be directed towards the bottom of the page. And if you have an electric field in a region, you also have a potential difference associated with it. So the potential difference between the plates is delta V. And we can now say, we've kind of made reference to this, uh, this fact before, but the potential difference of the battery of the but across the capacitor has to be equal to the potential difference uh, uh, or the voltage of the battery. The loop rule would tell you this. If you just follow around this single loop, you'd gain V naught going across the battery, which tells you you have to lose uh, an equivalent amount going across the capacitor. So when we look at the capacitors, much like the resistors, we're going to have a voltage drop when you go across them. And again, we have delta V is the potential difference between those uh, the two plates. If you want to calculate the amount of charge that's stored on one of these plates, okay, so I just underlined the word each plate, uh, it's calculated by, and this is an equation that's on the formula sheet, you have delta V, so the potential difference across the plates is equal to Q divided by C. And then you can do a quick manipulation of this equation to determine what capital Q would be. And capital Q would just be equal to C, the capacitance, and then multiply by delta V. 
and then the capacitance is expressed in units of farads. That'll be a more useful version of the equation when we start to look at uh, complex circuit analysis that does incorporate the capacitors in it, which we'll do uh, in the, the next lecture. But like I said, before we start to actually look at the effect a capacitor has on a more complicated circuit, the objective in this lesson is specifically just to take capacitors and to combine them into a single one. So in this diagram, I have a battery with a voltage V naught, and this battery is in parallel to two capacitors, C1 and C2. And my objective is I want to take those capacitors C1 and C2, and I just want to combine them into a single capacitor that has uh, an equivalent capacitance to it. <clears throat> and that's what combining capacitors involves. We just want to take all of our capacitors, reduce them to a single capacitance uh, with uh, an equivalent capacitance that's going to be CEQ. So in that diagram we have there, we want to turn it into a more simplified circuit. So my more simplified circuit would just have a single capacitor with a capacitance of CEQ. Uh, that capacitance is going to have a voltage delta V across it, which would be equivalent in this situation to the voltage of the battery. And then if you want to think about the charge that builds up on both plates, well, if we follow the conventional current model, I'd have positive charge that comes out of the battery. We can call that Q. So that would build up on this top plate. And that battery would do work to pull positive charge from the bottom plate and move it over there. So the bottom plate would have uh, equal charge magnitude, but just going to be the opposite sign because now it's deficient in electrons if we use the conventional current model. <clears throat> The ultimate objective of this is much like the point of reducing resistors in series or in parallel. In that scenario, that was a good way in which we were able to figure out what the total current coming out of the battery was. So in terms of capacitor, the point of simplifying the capacitors into a single one is, is it's going to tell us the total charge in the circuit. And that'll be something useful in our uh, circuit analysis. So for this simple circuit, if we just want to relate the different variables that you see there, we would have delta V is equal to capital Q over C. But delta V, which is the potential difference uh, across the capacitor, would, must be equal to V naught because the loop rule tells you that has to be true. If you gain V naught across the battery, you have to lose an equivalent amount across the capacitor. That would be equal to Q, which is the total charge uh, for the circuit. And then we're going to divide by the equivalent uh, capacitance. So we're going to look at now uh, how do you combine. We'll, we'll derive the equations for how do you combine capacitors that are both in series and parallel. It'll eventually lead to a couple of equations we have on the formula sheet, but I think it's worth going through the derivation just to see how we do apply Kirchhoff's voltage rule and also Kirchhoff's current rule to these circuits. And if, yeah, if you want to solve for like what the total charge is, the total charge would just be equal to V naught, which is the voltage of the battery times C equivalent. But we're actually going to start with uh, capacitors in parallel because believe it or not, this is going to be a bit of a a bit more of a simple derivation compared to if the capacitors are in series. So we'll say that your C equivalent is equal to CP. So CP means we're just combining a bunch of capacitors that are in parallel. Okay, so uh, I'll deal with the diagram we had before, which is we just have two capacitors that are in parallel to a battery. Uh, I've labeled so if we look at the, the battery, let's say we have conventional current, so positive charge comes out of here. Okay, that charge is going to be capital Q. It's going to go up, it's going to go towards the right, and it's going to hit one of these junctions or these nodes. I'm just going to call it node one. So the first thing we can do here is you can just apply the loop rule to identify what the potential difference is across each of those capacitors. So there's only two loops you can actually have. So if I were to draw them quickly. So one loop would be coming out of the battery and then going around like this. 
So we call that loop one. So if you applied the loop rule to that, you would gain V naught across the battery. You'd have to lose V one across the capacitor for your, your net voltage to be equal to zero. So that's one loop. So we know that V O would be equal to V one, which is the potential difference across capacitor C one. And then your second loop would just be starting here and then going all the way around. And then you get the exact same result. So if you go through that loop, you gain V naught across the battery and you have to lose V two across the capacitor for your uh, net voltage to be equal to zero around the loop. So what we can then say then is that uh, because these circuit elements are in parallel, V naught is equal to V one is equal to V two. And we'll make use of that momentarily. So that's Kirchhoff's voltage rule, the loop rule. Now we can also apply Kirchhoff's current rule and specifically we're gonna to apply to node one. Now, typically when we write down Kirchhoff's uh, current rule, we usually say it's the sum of the current that comes in is equal to the sum of the current that's going out. But in terms of the equations we're dealing with, with capacitors, we deal with charge, not so much the rate at which charge is passing through, which is current. So instead of writing down the point rule in terms of current, we're just gonna write it down in terms of charge. So if I do that, you can say the sum of the charge coming into node one is equal to the sum of the charge that's going out. And if you look at my diagram, I have my total charge Q coming into node one, and that splits into two separate charges, Q1 and Q2. So the point rule would then be Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2. But we want to get capacitance into this equation because we're trying to find a way to combine my capacitors into a single element. So I'm going to use the equation Q is equal to C times delta V. Then I'm going to sub it into the equation that's just on to the left. So if we do that, we would then have, now I should point out this capital Q right here, this relates to the capital Q for the simplified circuit. Well, technically it's for this capital Q as well, but uh, in terms of uh, identifying what the equivalent capacitance is, I want to specifically rate, relate this capital Q to the simplified circuit. So if you look at the simplified circuit here, then capital Q would be equal to C equivalent times V naught, which is an equation that we had on the previous slide for the simplified uh, circuit. Q1 would be C1 times V1, and then Q2 would be C2 plus V2. But we know that the voltage across uh, the battery, capacitor one and capacitor two is the same in accordance with the loop rule. So what we can then do is we're gonna cancel off V naught, V one and V two, because they're all just a common factor. So taking that equation, we can just cancel off V naught, V one and V two. And then we can see right here is then you then have your equivalent capacitance is equal to C one plus C two. Now that's the format of the uh, equivalent resistance if you had resistance in series. So notice here that the uh, summation format where you have like C1 plus C2, that's going to be associated with capacitors that are in parallel, not series. So things switch around a little bit here. The equation we have on the formula sheet tells me that uh, CP, which is your equivalent capacitance for capacitors in parallel, would be equal to the sum of CI. And then I just represents the number of uh, capacitors that you would have in parallel. And again, that's an equation that's going to be on the formula sheet. So if I have, if I have capacitors in parallel, all I have to do is just add the different capacitance values together to get the uh, equivalent capacitance. So like I said, this is a bit easier uh, for capacitors in parallel. Series is gonna be a little bit of a tougher derivation. So let's get into that now. So instead of calling it C equivalent, we'll call it CS. So CS means we're just going to combine a bunch of capacitors in series. So a simplified diagram of this would be if we have a battery V naught, we have total charge Q that's coming out of it. We pass through a capacitor C1, with the potential difference of V1 capacitor capacitor two, potential difference of V two, 
and we want to simplify to this uh, th this simple circuit. So this simple circuit has just a single battery and a single capacitor in it. Now, when you turn on the battery, th this is what is going to happen. So we have to try to identify something that is constant throughout uh, the circuit here. Okay, let's use the conventional current model. So if you turn on this battery, like let's say that the battery is turned off, I turn it on, then I'm going to have positive charge come out of the positive terminal. Again, assuming conventional current is actually true. Okay, so I'm going to have a positive current come out to the towards the top. It's going to go towards the right. So you're going to have positive charge that's going to build up on the left side of capacitor C1. So it's going to get a charge that's going to be positive Q. Now, what that's going to do is there's going to be an induction effect here. So uh, if this charge gains a charge of positive Q, what it's going to do is on the other, other plate, it's going to repel all those positive charges over to C2. And then that'll make, uh, it'll make uh, the right-hand side of C1 then have a negative charge. Okay, so you're going to end up inducing a charge that's going to be negative Q on the right side plate. Okay, this guy's neutral. This one's positive. This, this positive plate's going to repel the other positives away, leaving this with a charge of negative Q. Now, in terms of what happens with C2 here, well, you can then go to the electron flow model if you want to think about it. So uh, if electrons came out of the negative terminal, went down, towards the right, up, and then towards the left, you're going to build a charge that's going to be negative Q on the right-hand side of capacitor 2. So capacitor 2 will end up getting a charge of negative Q. And there's two ways you can justify what exactly the charge is going to be on the left side of C2. You can either use the induction argument. So if this plate has a negative charge, it's going to take the negative charges on this neutral left plate and just push them over to this side uh, which leaves a positive or if we just go back to c1 and talk about its induction effect so again if we started off with this plus q what it does is it takes the positive charge and it just forces it over to c2 so that results in the left side the left plate of c2 then having a positive charge to it so what's significant is that if you have capacitors that are in series with each other, the, one of the key characteristics is that the charge across every capacitor is going to be the same. Therefore, we have capital Q is going to be equal to Q1 is going to be equal to Q2. Okay, if you think back to just the resistors in series, the resistors in series had the exact same current through every resistor, uh, capacitors in series are going to have the same charge through each one of them. We don't talk about current because like once the capacitor gets fully charged, then the current kind of stops. But again, we'll talk more about that in uh, uh, the next lesson. Okay, so now we're going to apply the loop rule to the circuit. And again, just note that when you go across a capacitor, you're going to have a decrease in electric potential. So there's only a single loop you can possibly have here. So what would happen is if you apply the loop rule, you'd have you gain V naught across the battery, and then you'd lose V1 and V2 across the two capacitors. So the sum of the voltage uh, through that loop needs to be equal to zero in order for conservation of energy to be true. And then you'd have V naught minus V1 minus V2 equals zero. We'll move the V1 and V2 terms over to the right-hand side. And then we have an equation that tells me that V naught is equal to V1 plus V2. But we have an equation. And again, we want to try to get capacitance into this equation because that's what we're trying to do. We want an equivalent capacitance. We know that delta V is equal to Q over C. So I'll just replace uh, the Vs with Q over Cs. And if you do that, you would have, and again, this V naught here, we'll use that V naught for the simplified circuit on the right-hand side. So that V naught would be equal to the total charge in the simplified circuit divided by the equivalent capacitance. So Q over C EQ is equal to Q1 over C1 plus Q2 over C2. But 
on the previous slide, we showed that if you have capacitors in series, the charge across them is going to be the same. Therefore, Q is going to be equal to Q1, is going to be equal to Q2, and that's going to give me a common factor that I can cancel off. So going back to this equation, if Q is equal to Q1, is equal to Q2, they would cancel off. And now what you have is 1 over CEQ is equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2, which is the reciprocal relationship. But just notice again that things are opposite here. So again, if we write this down in the summation notation, we have one divided by your equivalent capacitance of uh, capacitors in series is equal to the sum of one over CI, where CI or, or I is the number of uh, capacitors you have in that circuit. And again, that's what the format of the equation looks like if you have resistors in parallel. So just notice that everything switches here. So uh, if you take the format of the equation for resistors in series, that's the format of the equation for capacitors in parallel. If you take the equation for resistors in parallel, it has the format of the equation for capacitors that are in series. So things flip around here, although they are just the identical formats of the equations. And things should be different because a capacitor behaves quite differently compared to like what a resistor does. All right, let's do a couple of uh, multiple choice questions. So this is from uh, the course description for physics C. Okay, so it says here we have uh, two capacitors are initially uncharged. Uh, they're connected in series to a battery as shown above. And then it wants to know what is the charge on the top plate of C1. Now, again, just bearing in mind that uh, this is a multiple choice question on the actual AP exam, you're gonna wanna try to narrow things down as quickly as possible. So once you connect this, okay, and then now we're actually gonna build charge on these capacitors using the conventional current model, you're gonna have positive charge come out of the top of the battery, okay? And that's gonna force positive charge to go right here. So immediately you can get rid of three of these distractors okay because the top plate of uh c1 needs to be negative okay so the top plate here oh, sorry top plate would be positive bottom plate's negative and then here if electrons came out that would make this bottom plate negative this top plate positive we're going to call this q1 so q1 is the charge on one of the plates of the capacitor and then same with uh, Q2. Okay, let's call this battery voltage V0. And we're just going to say the total charge coming out of it is going to be equal to Q. Okay, so these are capacitors that are going to be in series. So the way to combine them is we use the, it's going to be the reciprocal relationships. Again, things are opposite here. So we would have one divided by your equivalent capacitance for capacitors in series would be equal to one over C1. Oh, sorry, parallel. No, no, series, series is good. Yeah, one over uh, CS is equal to one over C1 plus one over C2. This would be equal to one divided by, <clears throat> I'm just gonna keep the units in uh, microfarads right now. So C1 is one over three microfarads plus one over six microfarads. Okay, I'm not gonna show the mathematical work of combining this, just plug one over three plus one over six in your calculator, and then just find the reciprocal of that. And then I'm gonna get that the equivalent capacitance would be equal to uh, two microfarads. Okay, so that's my equivalent capacitance. Now, what we know is that if you simplify this circuit, then we'd have an equation that relates the voltage to the capacitance to the total charge. So for a simplified circuit, we'd have delta V is equal to uh, Q divided by C. Okay, and this is going to be V naught. So again, this is for the simplified circuit. V naught would be equal to your total charge Q divided by your equivalent capacitance, which would be CS. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna calculate the total charge coming out of the battery. But since 
C1 and C2 are in series, it's just going to be the exact same charge. So once I figure out what the total charge is, I immediately know what the charge is uh, for both C1 and C2 because charge is equal for capacitors that are in series. So let's get Q by itself. So it'd be Q would be equal to V naught times CS. Okay, and then this would be equal to V naught, which is uh, nine volts multiplied by uh, two microfarads. I guess technically you should convert it right here, but you really don't need to do that. Two times 10 to the negative six farads. And then I'm going to get Q would be equal to 1.8 times 10 to the negative five coulombs. But the answers are in microcoulombs, so we can just convert it back. You really didn't need to convert it in the first place. You just keep everything in terms of micros, and this would work out. Okay, but nonetheless, I've already gone down the steps. So let's just quickly do it. One microcoulomb, you have 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Okay, so that's going to make the uh, coulombs cancel off. And then you would get your total charge, Q would be equal to, and we'll add the sign back in here. We, so, well, in a moment. Uh, so we would get uh, 18 micro coulombs. But again, the whole thing is since capacitors are in series, Then we know that, uh, so the total charge is equal to Q1 is equal to Q2. And then we can just say here for Q1, for the top plate, the top plate has a positive charge to it. So it would be positive 18 micro coulombs. So we had to do a bit of an indirect calculation. We had to figure out what was the charge to the circuit. And then by just knowing that uh, capacitors in series, the charge is going to be the same. We were then able to identify what the charge is uh, across capacitor C1. Okay, this one's a bit more complicated. So it says you have an air gap capacitor originally has a capacitance of C in it. And then what we do is we're going to put a metal sheet halfway in between the plates of the capacitor without touching anything. And then it wants me to identify what is the equivalent capacitance when I do this. Okay, now I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll start off by identifying what's going on originally before you put the metal sheet in, and then we'll see what happens here. Okay, so originally you would have this top plate And let's just say the top plate has a positive charge to it. So just put a bunch of positives here. Okay, so we'll say the top plate has a charge of plus Q. Okay, then we've got the bottom plate. We have not put this metal sheet in yet. So this would be negative, 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 negative. So we'll call that uh, negative Q. Okay, I'm just going to introduce a variable to identify the potential difference across the plates. So we'll just say that this here is going to be delta V. And then I'll write down an equation that relates the charge to the voltage to the capacitance for this thing before I put the metal sheet in there. So if I do that, it would just be an equation that tells me that delta V is equal to Q over C. Okay, I'm going to manipulate this equation for C, though. We're going to make use of it in a bit. Well, if C is equal to Q over delta V. Okay, so that's an equation for if the, uh, before I put the metal sheet in here. Okay, now let's go back to what happens if I do put the metal sheet in. So if I put the metal sheet in, uh, so again, this plate is going to be positive. Okay, this plate is negative. 
Now, this metal sheet, let's assume it actually has some thickness to it. So let's draw it so it's a little bit thick here. Now, what's going to happen is there's going to be an induction effect. So this metal plate is neutral. So what it's going to do is these positives are going to take the positive charges and they're going to push them to the bottom of the metal plate. So you're going to have a positive here, positive there, positive there. Okay, and then the electrons will do the same thing. They would just push, they push the electrons to the top. So this part becomes negative, 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 negative. Okay, we can just identify the different charges that we have here. So uh, this top part of the metal sheet would have a charge of negative Q. This one would have a charge of positive Q. Okay, this is positive Q, and this is going to be negative Q. Now, what I've done right here is you've actually created two different parallel plates that are now in series, okay? So if you look at this, uh, on the very top, you have a charge of plus Q here and negative Q there. So I've actually created uh, an electric field and an electric potential across this gap. So that's going to be let's identify what the potential difference is. Now it does tell me the question that uh, the sheets put exactly halfway in between. So that's gonna mean that the voltage across this plate, okay? So this positive, that negative is going to be delta V divided by two. Okay, and then here, uh, same thing, the potential difference between the bottom of the metal plate and this portion or the metal sheet and this negative portion is also gonna have a potential difference of delta V over two. So again, just to kind of clarify what we've done here, the metal sheet has the effect of creating two capacitors in series. Okay, so what I have is this is capacitor one. We'll call that C1. This is capacitor number two. Okay, I'm going to try to identify what is the capacitance C1 and C2. So C1 would be equal to, use this equation right here, be Q1 over V1. Okay, this would be equal to, now, because the capacitors are in series, the charge is just going to be uh, constant. So we can just write this down as being capital Q. And then V1, well, because the capacitor only spans half the distance, okay, this would be delta V over two. So this would look like two Q over delta V. Okay, but if we look up here, we can do a quick substitution. We know that C, which is the capacitance for this uh, capacitor before you put the metal sheet in there is just Q over delta V. So I'm just gonna do a substitution or place Q over delta V here with this C. So C1, would then be equal to two times C. Now, if you do it for capacitor number two, you're gonna do the exact same thing. So it would just be capacitor two is Q2 over V2, which is equal to, now since the capacitors are in series, the charge is gonna be constant. So we just write that down as uh, the total charge Q. Potential difference, half the distance. So delta V over two, this would again give you two Q, over delta V 
And again, do the same substitution, and then we get C2 would be equal to 2C. Okay, so now we have two capacitors that are in series, and we want to figure out what the effect of capacitance is. So now we use the equation that has the, uh, yeah, we're adding in series, so we'll use the reciprocal relationship equation. So that's going to be 1 over Cs would be equal to 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. This would be equal to 1 over 2C plus 1 over 2C, which would be equal to, okay, you have a common denominator, it would be 2 over 2C. The twos cancel off. And then now you'd be left with one over CS is equal to one over C. So what did the insertion of a thin metal sheet have on the actual, have on the actual capacitance of the parallel plates I started off with nothing. Okay. There was no effect at all. Okay. So if you have like a capacitor set up and you just put a thin metal sheet in there, it's not going to have any, it, it won't have any overall effect on what the, the total or equivalent capacitance would be. Okay. So that that's more of a, I'd say this problem is more of like a tricky theoretical question as opposed to a calculation question, but the math does back the work out. All right, so uh, you should have a new assignment now. That's assignment number five. In assignment number five, you want to complete all questions in the section on combining capacitors. And I'll talk to you in the next slide.